Hi guys. So that Mean Girls Bratz drop, huh? If you don't know, Bratz released their first doll in the Mean Girls collaboration, Katie, on October 3rd. We were warned that the dolls would be very limited, but we weren't given like an exact edition size or really much of anything to expect. We certainly didn't expect her to sell out in literally 30 seconds. Basically, everyone's mad. Lots of people weren't able to get her, and then the dolls were immediately, I'm talking within minutes of selling out up on eBay for upwards of like $600. This video isn't really about that. I guess I just wanted to complain and say how afraid I am for Regina's drop in a week because she's the one I want and I know a lot of people feel exactly the same way and I'm scared. I'm really, really scared. But it had me thinking about the wild, cyclical nature of the fashion doll market and high prices and expensive dolls, which was a long thought process that eventually led to me wanting to make this video. And I've actually kind of sort of wanted to do a video like this for a while because I know a lot of people have been requesting a doll collection tour, which I've done, but not on my channel. It's on my Patreon. Wink wink. And I thought, well, this is a good way to give some insight into my collection without going through the entire room. A peek into the kind of dolls I buy and why I buy them. But I also didn't want to do this video specifically because I didn't want to come off like I'm bragging because that's not really my intention. I'm not under the impression that my collection is like incredibly impressive or even that valuable. Full disclosure, you're not going to see insane numbers here. It's just very personal. I also think it could be helpful for me, as someone with sort of a, a quote-unquote platform, to be open and honest about what I pay for my things. Because especially for new collectors, it can be a very difficult and nebulous thing to quantify. It's not an easy thing to set expectations for. But also, to be clear, this sort of thing is not required. If someone doesn't want to talk about how much their collection costs, that's valid. It's literally no one's business. Yeah, a very straightforward sort of video, I feel. If you want... Not this. She's so dramatic. Oh my god. Anyways, if you want to sit around and watch me hold and talk about dolls for however many minutes this takes me, then I am so happy to have you. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, first of all, there's two very distinct categories of worth when it comes to talking about dolls. There's the price that she's currently going for in the market, and then there's the price that you actually paid for her. And if you're lucky, those can be two very, very different numbers. I'm going to take both into account here in this video, so some dolls that I own that are expensive, I'm sorry for all the air quotes, but some that I own that are expensive I paid well below market value for, and I'll mention that if it comes up. Okay, so when I think expensive in terms of dolls, what immediately comes to mind is integrity toys. If you're not aware of the brand, it's one aimed exclusively at adult collectors. The dolls are pretty limited and in a lot of cases require a membership to purchase. I've had the membership for about two years now and I would say integrity is overall pretty hit or miss for me, but they have put out some dolls that I have just absolutely loved. Now, my favorite doll that I own from them also happens to be the one that is the most expensive. This is Violent from the 2023 New Fantasy gift set, which was a membership exclusive. I paid retail for her, which was 200 doll hairs. Full disclosure, she didn't actually ship until right before my birthday, so I was able to call in some help to pay off the balance, but even if I couldn't do that, I, I would have happily paid the full amount because I really love this doll. For one, I just really, really love mermaids. Two, she reminds me so much of one of my favorite movies of all time, Aquamarine, 
And three, she is just beautiful, gorgeous, stunning, show-stopping, exquisite in every way. I do think the quality of Integrity Toys is often overstated, but this doll felt very much worth the price. To me, at least. Let's see... Oh, these are in no particular order, by the way. Okay, so if you're in the Monster High collector's space, you might be familiar with the phrase gold elastics. For some reason, like just in the past two or three years or so, some Monster High collectors got really obsessed with the fact that the first wave of Monster High dolls produced came with gold elastics in their legs, which then became black and then were removed altogether because elastic legs kinda suck. So gold elastics are like a really arbitrary status symbol to some collectors and makes the doll more valuable to them. I personally literally could not care less, but this is Draculaura, and she does have the gold elastics. You'll have to take my word for it because I'm not spreading her business out for the world to see on camera. Really, have some decency. Her being from the first wave makes her go for around, I would say anywhere from 200 doll hairs to 300 in box, which is how I bought her, because I bought her in 2010 for $21.99, and she's been with me ever since. Her and one other doll are all that remains from my original Monster High collection, so she's also just very sentimental to me. This is one of my Silkstone Barbies. Between the two, I'm pretty sure she's the more expensive one. She is the Red Moon Silkstone Barbie from 2004. And I believe she goes for about 125 to 200 doll hairs, which I really couldn't tell you what I paid for her because I didn't pay for her. She was a Christmas gift and you might sense a running theme among some of these. But that's really one of the biggest pieces of advice I could give to new doll collectors, especially. Take advantage of every holiday and birthday, leave the shame at the door, and ask for the dollies. The funny part is that she's actually one of the more inexpensive and easier to buy Silkstone Barbies, which I feel very lucky for because I remember coming across pictures of her for the first time and falling in love instantly. And I was so scared she would be like $500 or $600 on the secondhand market. Thankfully, no, but still pretty pricey. This is Sharpay from the Disney VIP doll line, if anyone remembers that. I actually really like those dolls, but they are incredibly expensive secondhand. I think they just did not sell well at all, and then everyone forgot about them until a few years passed, and that era of Disney Channel became nostalgic, and then everyone wanted them, and now Sharpay costs around 150 to 300 doll hairs. I have wanted this doll for literally years, because fun fact about me, I love Sharpay. I am the person I am today because of her. I, I needed this doll both to honor her and my queen, Ashley Tisdale. I found her on Mercari a few months ago for, I think around $90 plus shipping, which is a little more than I usually like to spend on like an impulse purchase, but I thought, you know, I've been waiting for years. Let's just go for it. And I did, and I actually got really scared because I thought the seller ghosted me, but she was just out of town for a while, and thank God, I got my Sharpe doll. Ashley, if you're watching, this one goes out to you. Now this, my friends, is a Struts fashion horse. How much is she worth? Honestly, I have no clue. If I have any doll that I would argue is, like, legitimately rare in my collection, it's this one, because... These dropped in 2008, I think, and everyone hated them. The media dragged these poor horses for filth. And for what? For being mugged and bodied? Do you know how many eBay listings I've seen for this exact doll, Milan, in my life? One. I've seen one eBay listing. When these do go online, the prices vary very wildly. Sometimes they sell for cheap because they're so obscure and strange that no one is really looking for them. 
or they sell for like 500 doll hairs because the people who are looking for them are really really dedicated to finding their horses i would i would argue that they're priceless personally i bought milan for 20 dollars i bought two milans actually for 20 dollars because i found her at an antique mall in my city which is literally the only time I've ever gotten lucky at an antique mall. I think I used up like a lifetime's worth of good fortune that one day. But I managed to find two, one in box and one out of box. I sent the inbox one to a friend and I kept this one and I just feel so privileged, honestly, to, to own this piece of history. This is Vega from Star Darlings, which was a sort of zodiac theme doll line from Disney in 2015. It was very short-lived and for a while I wanted this doll, Vega, because she's a Virgo, like me, and I'm very easily impressed in some ways. I make a doll a mermaid, make her a Virgo, and I'm like, sold. She goes for around 120 doll hairs now on the secondhand market, and she's another where I was just waiting and waiting for a good deal but her price was just going up and up and also listings were getting fewer and farther between so i bit the bullet and i bought her out of box for around 80 dollars i think plus shipping playline dolls generally don't like completely disappear off the market but there can be droughts or just periods where collectors aren't selling what you want, so sometimes you have to take what you can get. So I don't think Sailor Moon needs any introduction. This is a Sailor Moon adventure doll from the 90s, the, the quote-unquote pretty face edition, and the prices of these fluctuate a lot. Sometimes they're pretty reasonable, like Right now, I think they go for about $80 to $120 for the Inner Scout. Sometimes it's around $300. It literally just depends on how demanded they are at any given time. I have the full set of the Inner Scouts, which were another Christmas gift. My fiancé bought them all in a lot for me. And I want to say they were $350 for all of them. Maybe a little less. But at the same time he bought me those, I made another big purchase for myself. More Sailor Moon dolls. The full set of the inner dolls in the Bandai Style doll collection. I'm sorry I can't hold up all five of them. These were about $75 each when they dropped because I had to buy them from an importer which raised the price slightly, the, the retail price. But buying the full set also came at a discount, and I think they ended up being like $300 for the whole set. And I'm glad I got them when I did, because now they go for around $120 to $150 doll hairs each. June from Juku Couture is another pretty interesting one. I remember paying around $40 for her, new in box, and I was really excited about it too, because... With Juku Couture, there's a situation pretty similar to the Sailor Moon Adventure dolls, except in reverse. There's a pretty face version that came first, and then an ugly face version that came later. Well, okay, they're not ugly, just not as good as the first editions, and they come with less clothing pieces. Both versions of June actually go for around $150, give or take, but the earlier version is a, a little more difficult to come by. My June is actually wearing some pieces from the later edition, I just, I really like the rainbow obi. This is Masquerade Madness Chelsea from my scene. One of the best dolls to ever exist. One of the most beautiful, gorgeous pieces of plastic to ever have been produced on this earth. And that's just like a fact. I don't remember how much I paid for this doll because it was literally so long ago. I think it was 2014, 10 years ago. I, I was still in high school if I... It, I think it was like 50 or 60 doll hairs for new in box. She goes for about 250 to 350 doll hairs now, but a small price to pay for perfection, right? That's a joke. 
please spend your money wisely. Another my scene, this is Juicy Bling Chelsea, and as you can see, she is also incredibly beautiful and gorgeous and perfect. I paid $70 for her, out of box, but basically complete, which I think was not a bad deal, considering she goes for upwards of 300 doll hairs in box. Okay, so now we can talk brats, and I'm sorry I don't feel like going up to get all of those, but I think this is where we're gonna start to see some pretty insane numbers. Let's see, where do we even begin? Tokyo Agogo Jade is a good one. She's another I've had for just a very, very long time. I think she was the very first Bratz I bought as like a collector because I didn't have Bratz when I was younger. I paid $50 for her new in box and she now goes for, it looks like around 200 to 300 doll hairs which is actually less than I thought. Maybe Bratz prices are going down. Uh, this is one of my favorite Bratz dolls, though, both on a sentimental level and also just, like, an objective level, too. Uh, Sweetheart Dana is another I know goes for a lot. Okay, yeah, it looks like she goes for around 350 doll hairs. I got her for $50 in 2020, new in box. I know I said I wasn't gonna brag, but... I think I can brag about that one a little. Looking at my my eBay purchase history, Nighty Night Sasha for $50. That was another clutch right there. She goes for around $300 now too. But I remember that one. I, I don't remember if it was the seller not having very good photos or if she got flattened in transit somehow, but she arrived with her box just absolutely destroyed. Which is fine, I unbox pretty much all my dolls, except the perfume she came with had spilled everywhere. And for months, this doll smelled like straight chemicals. Just, I don't know, chemicals. I don't even know what the perfume was supposed to smell like. Cowgirls Jade, I got for $35. See, you don't need to feed these ridiculous market prices. Good deals will come to you. Some of it is luck, yes, but... A lot of it is patience and perseverance. Flashback Fever Yasmin, who goes for about 250 to 350 I got for 45 doll hairs, new in box, mind you, and I need to stress that in 2020 and 2021, the prices were not much lower than they are now. A little, but not a whole lot. Literally the first video I ever posted on this channel in 2021 was about how ridiculously expensive brats are. And, well, here we are now. Kina for $45, that's crazy. There are listings of her for like 600 doll hairs right now. And out of box, she still goes for like 200 to 300. But I remember this day. Someone on eBay must have gotten hold of like an MGA warehouse or something because Randomly, there were a bunch of listings for Kina for around this price, $45 to $50, and I think she also popped up briefly on AliExpress too, but they sold very, very quickly because it had probably been years since anyone had seen Kina for under like $400. Purely speaking in market value terms, I think Kina might be the most valuable doll I own actually. And right now I'm pretty satisfied with my Bratz collection. I have almost every doll that I like really really wanted with only a few exceptions. So here's the hoping I strike a miracle with those two. If anyone wants to crack open a warehouse full of Dresden dolls and sell her for $45, please hit me up literally any time. But I think those are all the dolls I wanted to mention or talk about. I hope you enjoyed the rambling. Maybe you found some advice here. Maybe you just like listening to me talk. Either way, thank you so much for watching. Now here's where I give you license to brag. If you want, I mean. Tell me about your most expensive dolls. And honestly, that could mean monetary value. That could mean sentimental value. Like just whatever comes to mind. And also tell me about any great deals you've scored. Whatever is on your mind, tell me all about it down there in the comments. And when you're done with that, just be sure to like and subscribe for any future fashion doll content. Thank you!